there is this ancient Mayan proverb that says this, it is not good to look at the clouds or your work will not progress. It is here in this ancient Mayan wisdom that I connect with today's ancient Hebrew wisdom. In the prophet Isaiah's writings, there was a prophetic message for Jacob. I'm sure you picked up on it. And it was simply this, that the divine one loves, cares, and protects Jacob. He is favored. He is blessed. And there are similar words, similar messaging from the prophetic angel to Mary. I'm sure you caught that as well. Mary, the mother of the coming baby Jesus. And again, all grounded in the divine favor and blessings. Now, fear, confusion, it all seems to be associated with such prophetic words and messages. But the reality is this, that nothing is impossible for the divine. That our God is a God of miracles, a God who honors, listen to this, the least impressive who calls the most unexpected to be a blessing in the world. And this promise is not only for Jacob and Mary, but also extends to all of God's people. There is a profound messaging of assurance and identity embedded in this passage, and if you read the context of these passages, it reminds us of our groundings as servants of the divine. But we, you and I, or not is another thing, but the groundedness of humanity is that we all bear the image of the divine on our faces. That we are surely precious in the eyes of our Creator, loved and chosen by name. But think about that. Chosen by name. This is so subtle in the scripture today, and yet so profound to imagine that you have been called by name. It means that we belong to this Creator, that we are not hindered by the perceived limitations and appearances, not limited by our skin color, our ethnicity, our age, our language, our gender, or ability. Instead, all are called. All are called regardless of what American society and culture imposes. But then let me pose this question, what are the words and messages that shape you, that shape me, that shape us? For migrants or immigrants or refugees, they hear the messages, you are a problem, you are not wanted, you are less than human, you don't belong here. For queer and trans people, the messages are evident, you are not normal, you are a burden, do not come close to our Christian churches because some Bible verse is being used out of context. For people of color, black, brown, indigenous, API, and Arab, our messages are quite clear over the centuries. Your bodies do not matter. You are less than human, made to be enslaved, conquered, dominated, colonized. Horrific genocidal of our people is widely accepted and even blocks over. For the poor and working class, you also have been told messages, oh, vote for us and we will help you get out of your debt and poverty. You just need to try harder. You just need to work harder to get out of your financial distress. Your rights do not matter. Big business, rich people are better than you. Our politics, our government, will continue to ignore your needs of luck, figure it out. And for women, for young ladies, you have received clear messages. Your decisions about your bodies do not matter. You will not be paid as much as a man. You are not as successful if you don't have children or are married. Because the Bible somehow teaches us that a woman cannot teach over a man. And for village elders, you have heard these messages as well. Your best days are behind you. You are now limited by your lack of energy, unable to shift with the times, hindered by poor health conditions, and relegated to nursing homes and retirement homes. You see, the point of all this, my children, the point of all this 
my beloved, my brothers and sisters, my hermanos, my hermanos, hermanas, is that there is plenty of words, plenty of messages bombarding us day after day in our news, in our social media, in our daily political and identity talk. Messages that cause us to think that we are a burden and not a voice. Ignored and not chosen, hated and not loved, forgotten and not called, choosing the past instead of the future promise. Now, things like racism and white supremacy, patriarchy, ageism, ableism, homophobia, transphobia, capitalism, and scarcity thinking are just some of the false words, some of the false messages. These are the forces that make us think. That we are not a blessing, that we're not favored, that we're not chosen, that we're not called by name. And many, this is as many of pray into these lies and stop believing that they are favored here on earth, put here on earth to bless and to care for others. This is why I believe many cannot see the dignity. This is why I think many cannot see the blessedness, the beauty, cannot see the image of the divine on another face, because they can no longer see it in themselves. What others may not see, the divine ones, the Elohim, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, clearly see. When all others see something that's worthless, God sees your belovedness. When others see uselessness, God sees worthiness. When others see you as unimpressive, God sees you as amazing. When others see you as ineffectiveness, the divine sees an extraordinary being that carries God's love into the world with all of its uniqueness and beauty. And you know what happens when we start walking in that blessing? In that promise and in that favor, something deep inside of us begins to happen. We begin to notice, we begin to pay attention. Somehow our eyes are open to this reality that's healing and reconciling the world, already happening around us, already breaking in, already being summoned into completion, into our friendships and marriages and relationships, into our communities, into our workplaces, even into our families, and suddenly, those that we despise, those that we hate, those that we consider to be our enemies, just begin to see more love. They begin to see them as more palpable, as things are more possible. There is this room that opens up to a possibility of newness, and one stops looking towards the past, towards one which has already passed by, and instead begins to look to the future, choosing the miracles that are already And then we are awakened to the favor and the blessing that's in us, inherently within us since the very beginning. Let these words, let these messages become our guiding light into the future of this Advent season, grounding us in the divine image that we bear on our faces 